Yo, what's up guys? Kobe Cheese here. And uh, for a long time, I've been telling everybody that I'm going to do this video uh, recording and editing tutorial. So finally, I've, I've kind of written up a, an outline of things that you guys should probably know about in order to get started or maybe just some tips if you've already, you kind of do a little bit of editing yourself and you just want to uh, get a little bit better at it. Some things that help me out whenever, you know, I've been doing this for a little over a year now and I've kind of learned some things along the way. So hopefully I can uh, show you some things to really help you out. Uh, so I'm just going to go through this outline. I'm going to basically start off by showing you guys uh, or telling you guys about the, the stuff that you need uh, to do in order to get started. So uh, what I use to record all of my games is, uh, of course, uh, Fraps. You're going to need a copy of Fraps. You can go uh, just type in Fraps in Google and find that. And I'll go over the settings and stuff for that here in a little bit. Uh, and then you're going to need, uh, what I use for recording my video is Sony Vegas. And so I would recommend picking up a copy of Sony Vegas. Now, uh, a lot of you guys probably will say, well, I don't have enough money for Vegas. Well, that's fine. You can go download the trial of Sony Vegas on their website. Uh, this is not like a pirating tutorial, so I'm not going to, not going to tell you how to go like get it for free, but I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you Google it, you can figure out how to get it. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, another thing that you can use if you want to do any streaming or just live recording and uh, recording with smaller file sizes is uh, a copy of XSplit. So uh, those are the those are the three main programs that I use for recording. Now, uh, if you're going to be doing League of Legends, like maybe some of you guys watching this don't um, aren't doing this for League of Legends, but uh, but if you're going to be using uh, League of Legends games or whatever, uh, I would definitely pick up Lala Recorder and have that running for all your games so you can run replays and record from that. So um, so let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go through like the different settings that you're going to need and the programs and uh, in order to, to get the most out of them in it, as well as like what hardware that you want to use to uh, to go through this. So let me just show you my screen real quick and we'll go through this stuff. Okay, so I'm um, gonna show you my Fraps settings first. So when you're working with Fraps, the main thing to uh, consider with Fraps is that it, it creates extremely large file sizes, okay? So Fraps creates like raw files from your game and they're, they're very large. So as far as the uh, performance when you're running Fraps, you're gonna actually have a lot of slowdown if you have either a slow hard drive or you're running on the same hard drive that your game is installed on. So what I recommend doing if you're going to be recording games is pick up a second hard drive. So let me show you my setup that I have here. And you know, this is probably a little more excessive than some people, but I've got, uh, I've got like five hard drives, all right? <laughs> I've got two externals right here that I've just picked up from Amazon the other day. Uh, they're USB 3.0. You cannot use fraps on a USB 2.0 hard drive. It's too slow. Uh, so don't try that, otherwise it's just not going to work out for you. Um, but I have my League of Legends installed to my uh, C drive, and then I usually uh, would record to a second hard drive that I have uh, set up. And that will eliminate almost all of the lag that you have, unless you just have a slower computer. Um, sometimes you'll get a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of a spike in lag whenever Fraps switches over files, because uh, Fraps records usually about three minutes of footage before switching over. So let me show you what that does. Um, so this is one game on that I've done here. So so you see I what I do whenever I record fraps is uh, let's say I'm about to go into a, a game of League of Legends. I'll just take uh, I'll just take this right here. I'm in I'm in movies and I'll just uh, I'll just change it. I've got a, I've got it all organized like League of Legends here and I'll create a folder for the game so that way you don't mix up all your files. So let me go into one of the, the games here and you see all these files here. Um, that's how many files it was for for just one game of League of Legends and you can see if I click on one of the files it's 3.95 gigs for one of these little pieces so this entire uh, so this entire game was let's see let's go to properties it was 180 gigs so of course you're gonna need a lot of storage if you're gonna be recording in fraps the good thing about it is that it's very high quality so you can do some really good stuff with it so as far as the settings are concerned you're going to want um, to do a few things. As far as the, uh, you click on the movies tab here, and I actually record in 60 frames per second. Uh, personally, 
Uh, I only recommend doing that if you have a fast enough computer. Uh, the other, re other reason I do that is because sometimes I like to do slowdowns, and the more uh, frames you capture at, the more you know slow you can go down to. So, oops. Um, the other reason I do it is because I don't like playing in slow frame rate. And when you record in Fraps, it, it usually it'll lock your frame rate at what you're recording at. So, so I recommend saying so. Like if you're if you have a problem running at low frame rate in a game, you don't like that, but you still want to record, then you may click on the 60 frame rate. So, uh, so anyways. Most of you guys are probably going to be recording at 30 frames. That's uh, that's all you really need. But I mean, I'm just I guess I'm just picky and and I can do it. So I click 60 frame rate. Um, also, you can set up your video capture key here. It's I think it's default to something else. I use the the numpad key because it works better for me. Um, also, whenever you're recording, you can you can actually decide to record your mic or not. That's up to you. And um, also, let's see, um, that's pretty much it. You can just decide to uh, record your, your sound or not. As far as the overlay, uh, you can do an overlay on there. That'll It'll put a little uh, number showing you your frame rate in a game, and it turns red to let you know that you're recording. I usually hide that because I'm streaming and recording for apps at the same time. Uh, enough about fraps, though. Let's jump into the Vegas settings that you're going to need. All right, so just minimize that. All right, so when you jump into Vegas for the very first time, you're going to have probably a little bit different setup of Windows than I do. And I think that all I did was I, I there was there's like a master volume window that I hid. But if you want to use the same setup as me, you can just kind of have the, the windows up here. You can find those in tools and, uh, I don't know, view, sorry, view. And then you can kind of look at what I've got here and... It's kind of up to you, but a lot of the stuff you don't really need for just standard uh, standard editing in Vegas. The main thing you need to know how to do is set up your uh, like your your actual render settings and things like that. One thing that I would uh, mention before I go into this is like, if you're going to be recording video games and you want them to like look really good, you need to have a, a correct monitor. And this is unfortunate. Some people for some reason don't have the um, the right aspect ratio on their monitor. So you need to have a 16:9 monitor. That's stuff like like uh, something that can go up to 1920 by 1080 p. If you have a monitor that only goes up to 1680 by 1050, then you're gonna have a weird you're gonna have a weird black lines on your videos. And so uh, so if you want the best like quality recording, make sure you have a monitor that has a 16:9 resolution. Uh, anyways, that's all I'll say about that. But uh, as far as the render settings, let me go ahead and pull in something here, and we'll just go and look at that. So, so I'm going to go to File, Render As. And right now, you see I've actually got a preset set up here for YouTube 1080p. Uh, you won't have that right off the bat. So you need to uh, make sure you go to Save As Type, and then select Windows Media Video WNV. For me, I've found I've tried out the different formats like MP4 and AVI and stuff like that, and WNV seems to be the smallest file size and the best quality from what I've experienced, anyways. So um, when you do that, then you need to go to this right here, 8 Mbps HD 1080p. This, if you're going to be recording in 1080p, that's the one to use. You can also do 720, but um, but if you're going to be recording in 1080p, you'll use the the 8 Mbps HD 1080p 30p video. And then you have to click on custom because it's actually not set up all the way correct yet. So click on custom. Uh, audio should be fine at default. And then you go to D, uh, to the video. And this is where you have to fix it. Right now, the, the width and height is like at a weird number for some reason. So under image size, go to custom. And just type in 1920. 1920 right there. And it's already at 1080. Um, and then pixel aspect ratio, put at square, 1.0 square. And the rest of this stuff is fine. And then um, bit rate, I'll leave that at 8 million. And so that looks good. And then what I do is I just I just type in 1080p YouTube and then hit the little save button. I'm not which I'm not gonna do right now because I already have it, but that's what you'll do. Good good uh, practice to just set up lots of presets so you don't ever have to mess with this stuff again. Uh, as far as 720p is concerned, if you guys are not gonna be recording and, or rendering in 1080p. Just select the uh, 720 by 30p video, 
once again, go to custom, video. Uh, the video is actually already set up correctly there. Um, so I don't think you actually have to do anything uh, on this one. This one's actually already set up properly. So let me cancel out of that. The other thing that you would do when you first mess with Vegas, I believe, uh, is go to your project video properties, which is going to be over here in, this, uh, in your preview pane. Uh, so click this little thing right here, project video properties. And um, you're going to need to set it up in the resolution that your videos are recording at. So if you're recording in 1080p, 1920 by 1080, uh, if for some reason you have a different resolution and you're recording all your video in a different resolution, just set it, set your width and height to that resolution. Um, but the rest of this should be fine. Um, I don't think I've changed anything else in here. And so, yeah, the rest of this you can just mess with on your own. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't really change anything else other than those right there. Okay, so there's your settings for Fraps in Vegas. The, uh, the other thing I'll talk about is recording via XSplit. Uh, the considerations that you're going to need to know and like the limitations with that. So first off, you cannot actually edit XSplit files unless you've bought XSplit. So the thing, the thing about XSplit is that uh, you can only record an FLV uh, unless you have the bought version and then it lets you choose MP4 for local recording. And I don't think I can actually show you guys. Yeah, while I'm, uh, while I'm actually recording here, I'm actually recording via XSplit right now, so I can't show you. But basically in XSplit, you'll go to uh, broadcast and then edit channels and you'll edit your local recording. If you're gonna actually record like a, a file via XSplit and you can set up MP4, I'll probably, I may do like another tutorial later, but I'm not, I'm not gonna try and focus on recording via XSplit right now. The main thing is that you can record via XSplit as an MP4, which is editable in Vegas. However, you do need to buy a copy of XSplit for that to work out for you. Um, so that's all I'll say about that for now. All right. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is uh, organizing your files. If you're going to be recording via for apps or anything like that, you, you probably just want to make sure you record, uh, organize your files properly so, so that you don't mix up because you've got like all these files and then let's say you recorded another game and if you record it in the same folder, then you're going to be like, well, where's the end of that file? And it's like, it's a big pain in the butt. So make sure you, you do or good organization. Just keep everything uh, organized in the folders that you want. And then what I'll do is, let's say I want to uh, take this game right here and I want to maybe do a commentary on it or something like that. Uh, you can tell I've already dragged this game into the timeline because it's got these little SFK files. Uh, once you drag stuff into Vegas, it creates those as like a reference to them. Uh, so don't be alarmed if that happens. So I'm just going to drag some files into Vegas right now so you can see. So I'm going to drag these in right here. Um, just to get them in, just drag anything to your timeline. That's the easiest way to get it in. You can always like go to file, open, and like pull stuff in that way, but that's the slow way. I'd say just, just grab your folder and just drag the stuff into the timeline just like that. So there we go. Let's say this is a full game here, and I'm going to uh, do some editing on it. You've got all your files right here, and you can see you can move them around as much as you like um, right there on the timeline. All right, so... Another thing you can do is if you want to have like a text effects above things, you can also create other layers. Uh, so layers are on the left side over here. You can just right click and go to insert audio or insert video track. So I can insert a video track there. You can drag that easily to above it or below it. So if I wanted to, uh, you know, put some kind of effect above like this, you'll see the, the one on top, of course, will play over the one on the bottom. Okay. So just wanted to show you that. Uh, the main thing, if you're going to be actually editing videos, like some of you guys, you may just record a file and you may just want to render it up as, as it is and record over it, but uh, I'll go over that later. For now, I want to show you all the different editing because on my videos, for example, my, uh, my first impressions videos that I do of the new champions, what I'll do is uh, lots of editing. You know, I'll take all the games and I'll go through and I'll find the clips that I think are relevant to the game and I'll, I'll edit them up. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, in these cases where I have like full games, the easiest way for me to do it is I'll just, I'll just drag all the entire game onto the timeline just like this. And um, what I do is, well, I've actually got multiple monitors. So I'll set up my, um, if you have multiple monitors, this is much easier because right now this is a small preview pane. So it's hard to see what's going on. So what I recommend doing is if you have multiple monitors is right click on this and go to preview device preferences 
and then um, set the uh, display adapter that you want your preview to show up on, okay? And then what you do is um, you push this button right here and that allows it to preview on the external monitor. Right now I have it set up for this monitor so you can see that's the full screen view of what I'm doing. And if I hit spacebar, oh. it's gonna play the, um, the actual clip. All right, so um, so what I'll do is I'll actually like move Vegas over to my other monitor, and then I'll put the display on, and uh, and I can see easier that way. If you don't have that, then you're just gonna have to deal with the small screen for now. Uh, anyway, it's just a quick tip for you guys. Um, let's see. So as far as editing is concerned, what I'll do is I'll go in here. You can uh, scroll wheel in or out to kind of zoom in and uh, get a better view of what's going on. And let's say I just want to find like all the cool kills that I had that game. So I'll take a look at this and I'll go, I'll just kind of click forward until I find like where, um, where a kill is taking place or something like that. And so let's say it's like kind of farther in. All right, so let's just say, uh, for example, there's a kill right here and I'll just watch it. And I'll say, okay, the kill happens from, from right here. So I'll, I'll just push S and that's a split. So what S does is it splits the, uh, the clip and then let's say the kill ends like right here. And then I'll uh, click up there and I'll hit S and I'll split again. And let's say the rest of this footage is unnecessary. So I'll just uh, I'll just take it. Hang on. Uh, there we go. So I'll just take it. Uh, shift, click to select it all and then delete. And so there's my, there's one, one clip that I've got right there. Okay. So I'll just move out of the way. And what I'll do is I'll just keep going through and finding the clips that I want. So let's split, split. And let's say I don't even care about the audio because I'm going to redo the audio. So I'll, in fact, I can just um, shift, click, and select all of the audio on the bottom side there. What you want to do is click U for ungroup. So if anything is grouped, you hit U, ungroup it, and then delete it. And that'll delete that out. If you don't ungroup it, it'll delete the, um, the audio file, or sorry, the video file as well. So, so let's say I've got my two clips here uh, from that game that I wanted to edit up for the video. Uh, and then we're going to need to somehow transition between the two clips, which is actually very easy to do in Vegas. Some of you guys may want to do some fancy stuff. Uh, for me, all I do is just a simple fade. And so the easiest way to do that is to take a clip and you just drag it over the top of another one and see how it automatically fades it for you. Um, I usually do like one second fade and that usually is good. So um, let me just take a look. So it'll just whoop, fade right in. So it automatically does it real simple. Vegas is simple. Uh, you can obviously go ahead and like, if you want to do some real crazy stuff, I'll show you some effects later. But for now, just for simple editing, that's pretty much the easiest thing to do. Um, another way to fade stuff on your own, like if there's no, if you're not actually crossfading, let's say you want to fade into this clip here, you can just take the very edge of it right there and see my cursor turns into this little thingy, I don't know, uh, and just drag it like that and it'll fade, okay? And you'll see the, the clip will fade in. And you can actually change the fade type as well. You can right click onto the fade part right there. And you have a bunch of options here. At the very top it says fade type. And you can have all these different fades. Usually I like to go with the straight line fade. Uh, just depends on what, you, what effect you guys are going for. So there's your straight line fade. And then at the very end you can do the same thing to fade out. Just drag it like that. And we can go to fade type. Boom, just like that. Okay, so there's your fading. Uh, so I showed you how to split uh, clips, how to fade them, and um, so let's say this is all like one clip. I want to hold this together in case like later I'm moving stuff around. I don't want to ungroup them. So I'll take so like right now I can move these independently, right? So I want to take these and group them. So I'm gonna select both of them and I'm gonna hit G, and that's a group. So now if I select one file, it moves both of them. Okay? So if that's already edited up like I wanted, then I'm gonna group it. And so there you go. So there's your groups. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is like speeding up and slowing down clips. So let's say that uh, something really cool happened here, but it's really hard to see it because it happens so fast, okay? So what I want to do is I want to, so let's say, yeah, okay, I jumped on that, that, uh, that dude right there. So I want, to, I want to take it, I want it to be regular speed right here. So I'm going to push spacebar to play it. And then right before I want it to do it, I'm going to hit enter so it'll stop. I'm going to split the clip. I'm going to hit S. And then let's say I want it to slow down right until that point. So I'm going to hit enter again, and then I'm going to split that clip with S. I'm going to move this rest of the part out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the clip. I'm going to hold down control and then wait, uh, I mouse over the very edge until I see the squiggly line. So wait until you see the squiggly line there where the cursor is at. And I'm just going to drag it out to the right as much as I want to slow it down. 
All right, so let's say I slow down that much right there. And then I'm just going to move this clip right back into place. And let's see how that looks. Um, you'll see it slow down quite a bit. So, boom. Okay, so it slows down. Pretty simple. And the same thing applies if you want to speed a clip up. You simply hold down control and go to the left, and that speeds it up, of course. So that'll, uh, that'll help you speed it up. Okay? All right. So... So there's your like basic editing of uh, clips in the timeline and things like that. Another thing you guys may want to learn how to use if you are trying to just look for a clip from one uh, media file instead of like you know multiple ones like I've dragged in is the trimmer. So right here in the very middle is the trimmer. And this is pretty easy to use so it won't take long for me to show you this. So I'm going to drag a clip into the trimmer. So I'm just going to drag this in right there. And there's my trimmer. And again, I can use the preview if I'd like on here. Uh, but the, the same thing applies here for this one. You can you can go in and find uh, the clip that you want. And uh, let's say this is what I want like from here to here. Uh, so I'm going to drag and select it. It's got the little yellow bars here. And it's blue highlight selected. So what I can do is if I want just the video or just the audio, what I can do is uh, while that's selected just like that, hit tab. And you see it shows up this little video thing. So that means I'm just going to get the video or if I hit tab again, just get the audio, hit tab again, there's no icons, that means I get all of it. So let's say I just want the video, so I'm gonna hit tab, there's the video, I'm gonna drag that in, boom, and there's my next clip. So I can go ahead and just fade that in right there. I'm gonna do about a one second fade, and there we go. So there's my clip using the trimmer. So that's really all you need to know about the trimmer. I mean, there's some other stuff you can do, uh, but that's, that's fair enough. Uh, another thing, if you're watching a long game and you want to just like sit there and watch it, so I hit spacebar and it's playing right now, and you want to check out what's going on, but that's too slow for you, you just you want to get through it fast. Uh, one thing you can do is down here on the bottom left where it says rate, you can actually drag this little orange bar right here and move it to like two, and that'll play it twice as fast, or you can move it up like super fast, up to four times the speed, which is really hard to watch it by the way. Uh, two, usually good. So right now I can I can play it and it plays everything at twice the speed. So this helps me get through the editing a little faster if I need to like watch stuff. Um, uh, one thing you may need to note uh, is that watching things in the preview pane is gonna be very laggy for you. Don't expect that to be the final product of when you render the video, but it's just hard to preview that raw file um, in Sony Vegas. So, so like you're going to try and preview a video and if you're actually playing it, playing it back it's going to run a little bit slow one thing to help alleviate that is uh, see right here where it says preview quality uh, you can change that to a smaller amount so i play it at good half and that's good for me if your computer's a little slower you may have to run it at like a preview half or draft half if you have like a beast machine that's even better than mine which i don't know how you do that because i paid a lot of money for mine you can play it at like uh, best uh, full for best quality viewing just kind of depends on um, what kind of quality you want and how smooth you want the video to play back while you're watching it so that's just something to note there okay um, so we talked about the trimmer let me show you guys how to do some media effects and transitions and set up some presets for that sort of thing so let's say I want to add some text to this file here I'm gonna go to uh, media generators, which is this tab right here. So you got project media, uh, explore transition video effects, media generators. Okay, so on the left side, I've got uh, several different things I can do. Um, so first of all, let's do some text. So I've got text right here. I'm going to click on text. And uh, there's a couple of different effects that are already set up in place here. And you'll notice I've actually got some that I've set up uh, on my own as presets. So let me just show you how you can do that. Right now I'm going to use default text and what this has is a uh, transparent background with just standard text. So I'm going to drag that into my timeline and there you go. So I've got text on top of the screen. So a different way, there's a couple different ways to edit that. So I'm going to go in and click this part right here where it says generated media. There's three buttons here. Um, there's a uh, pan crop and then effects and then generated media. This will do most of the stuff you need to do for your text effects. So I'm going to click on that and it brings up this little window right here that allows you to change different things. So I can edit the text here and let's just say um, my title, okay? And you can write, you can click on the, the size, scroll up and down to get it to the size you would like. Pick whichever font you want. Um, also, if you're looking for good fonts, you can go to 1001freefonts.com. That'll give you a lot of really cool ones you can download there uh, if you need better font. I'm just gonna stick with the default for now just because this is for a tutorial and you can make it bold or not, whatever you want to do. 
and then go to placement. You can move you can you can move your text around. Let's say I want my title right up here in the uh, top left area. So I'm just going to move that there, and you can see it uh, on the preview pane showing up. Uh, properties. This is where you can change the color of your text. So let's say I want to make my text yellow or something. There we go. Made the the text yellow. That sounds good. Uh, text properties, tracking scale. So none of this stuff I really care about messing with, but you can. Effects. I usually like to put effects on mine just because it makes it a little easier to see. So you can do an outline. Let's say I want to do like a like a black outline around my text. So I'm going to move this down to the bottom. Let's get a black color in there. And then we can draw a shadow if we want. We can give it like a white shadow. And so I'll pull that up to the top. And that'll give it a white shadow. And you know, so there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with that. And then let's say I want to use this text for like all my videos. I want to use this kind of title uh, later on without having to go through and do all this crap again. So on preset, make sure you guys get into the habit of using presets as much as possible. So go to your preset, change this to like title text, okay? And then hit your save button and boom, from there on out, you're going to have that, okay? So right now I've got these, uh, I've got these presets already set up. So let me drag it in, I'll show you my preset. So I've got one for like Twitter text, okay? So it shows me like, follow me on Twitter and Facebook for updates, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to type this in each time. So I mouse over that and it's already got it positioned perfectly for me. And so I can just drag that into my videos. No extra work. The idea is if you're gonna be making lots of videos, you want to reduce the amount of work that you have to do each time, right? So that is adding uh, text effects. Now, as far as transitions are concerned, personally, I don't use transitions. I think they're annoying and unprofessional. Um, but you know, sometimes they can look good. So, so here's your transitions. You just go to the transitions tab and there's all kinds of transitions that you can do here. The main thing that you do is you have your video faded in here for as long as you want the transition to take place. So let me just do like a, here's like a two second. So I dragged it over cross faded right now. It's just got a standard cross fade of course. Uh, but let's go ahead and make it a blind wipe. So I'm going to take this blind right or this simple one here. I'm just going to drag it into this transition area right here. And that's all I got to do. Boom. And then it has some, each one has its own little properties like divisions, extra spin, stagger. So these are all set up. I'm just going to click the X because I don't care. And so let's take a look and see how that works. Boop. And there's your transition, two second transition. And that's that simple. That's really all there is to it. So you just find the transition that you want, drag it in and boom, there you go. Okay. So that is transitions. Now let me show you guys how to do like zooming in effects and things like that. Okay, so where's the part? Okay, so I had a part here where I slowed it down. I want to go to that. Okay, so so let's go to this. Let's go back to that part where I slowed it down. Okay, so let's say I like I like how it slowed down, but I want to add a little more effect to that. I want to zoom in at the part where Jax leaps on top of ja on to Scion here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to click on that clip and see where you mouse over this button here. It says Event Pan and Crop. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring up your event pan and crop window here. And it's actually got its own little timeline. So I can take this and I can drag it and you'll see the part where he goes in. So let's say I want it to be fully zoomed in at the point where Jax leaps on top of Scion. So I'm just going to drag it to right there. Boom. All right. So what you got to do is you have to actually create what's called a keyframe by double clicking right here at that point. Okay. So right now everything's nothing has changed, but I have created a keyframe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, zoom in on that point. Now usually these are already clicked right here, these two buttons, lock aspect ratio and size about center. So you're going to need to unclick those if you want to uh, do some crazy sizes, but right now I want to keep my aspect ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and click lock aspect ratio, but I don't want it to center on the screen. I want it to center on Jack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the little, you got the little bars here. You can take it and you can just drag it in, make it about as large as you want. So I can see the preview pane shows me like what it's going to actually look like in the frame and then I've got it zoomed in right there. So boom. Uh, so let me just kind of drag it and you can see it's going to zoom in. Boom. And it lands on, lands on Scion. And then what I'm going to do is I want it to play for a few frames at that size there. And then I'm going to make another keyframe and I want it to zoom back out to normal. So I want it to zoom out about right there. I want it to zoom out back to normal. So I'm going to create another keyframe. And then what I'll do is I'll just go to the drop down menu and click on default. So there you go. Let's go ahead and play that back and let's see how it looks. I'm going to click the preview and hit spacebar. Actually, I need to uh, I need to undo the fast thing because I don't want to play super fast. So I double click that, it goes back to rate of one. And let's play that at normal speed. And boom, slows down, zooms in, shows that I get hit and I run away safely.
And there's your simple zoom in effect with a slowdown. And it doesn't look too bad. All right, so that's how you zoom in things. Now, sometimes if you drag in a media file, let's say you want to, uh, let's say you are doing like a guide on a champion. And you want to show, hey, here's the items that you're going to build on this champion. Okay, cool. But let me show you what happens when you drag in a media file to, uh, to, uh, to Vegas. It's kind of weird. So here's the, uh, here's the file I, I used for my last Jax video. And it's the build. So here's what happens. When I drag it in, it makes it full size, okay? And that's the way it, that's the way it puts it in. So you're going to have to resize that manually in order for it to work out. So what you have to do is uh, go ahead and put it to the location you want. And of course, I have it in my second layer here, so it'll show up on top. And I want this to, to fade in at first. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a fade. Let's drag it out. If you, drag, if you don't hold down control and you just drag it out, it'll make the, the file longer. Uh, you know, uh, If it's a video file, it'll just loop it. In this case, it's just an image. So obviously, it's just looping the same image. Uh, so I'm going to move it a fade out there. Bam. All right, so there we go. It's going to fade in. And there's the item, but now I just have to resize it. So I'm going to click on the same thing, the event pan and crop. And here is the file. So I'm going to I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom out because I need to uh, get a good view of this. And there's my preview pane. And I need to undo the lock aspect ratio. Okay. So here's how you move things and position them. It kind of sucks, to be honest. It's not the it's not my favorite thing to do, but you'll get the hang of it as you get better at it. So you just want to take one of the corners and just start dragging it really far out, okay? And if you watch the preview pane, you can see that it's moving. So let's say I want to get it right above where Jax is. I need to, so if I move it down, it moves it up, and if I move it up, it moves it down, right? If I move it to the right, it makes it smaller, all right? So you basically just have to get used to this, so I'm just going to move it right about there, and I think I want to make it a little bit smaller, so I'm going to move it to the right, and you just kind of got to play with it until it gets, so that looks like a good spot there. And so I'm just going to hit the X, and boom, there you go. It's going to zoom in, and there is the items right there, and a good spot, not taking up the entire screen. And that's how you move uh, media files around. And you can do the same thing if you dropped in another another video file, and you want to do like a picture-in-picture picture somewhere, or anything of that sort, you can picture. Let's say you like took a webcam later, and you want to put that on there. Um, you have all those sorts of options uh, using your event pan and crop uh, window there. Okay. Um, so that's your resizing and zooming and video effects. You can do some cool video effects. I don't ever mess with these. Again, I think sometimes people overdo it and they're kind of unprofessional. But um, I'll show you the one video effect that I make use of because, like I said, I like to I like to create reusable assets for my videos. So let's say you wanted to make like an intro like mine. Okay, so let me go to my intro real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I have mine organized in project files, League of Legends, assets, and I've got my intro right here. So I'm going to drag it on and you'll see why it's kind of weird. Alright, so my intro is green, right? And all it is is my, uh, my name popping up, and it's got a little sound to it, Oops. and then it goes away, okay? The reason I did, what I did was I actually, uh, I made this effect of, I used the zoom that I showed you, and I made it, you know, zoom in, and then I made it move to the left using the keyframes that I showed you from earlier. But I didn't want to have to, like, literally go in and do that effect every single time. I just wanted to drag in this file and make that my intro. The problem is that you cannot make a video transparent. You have to make a video either black or white or something like that. So what I did was I made it completely green. And so in order to make it show up, you know, uh, as transparent, what you do is let's go ahead and mouse over over here. And what you do to make the uh, background transparent is you go to the video effects tab right here and you go to chroma gear and pure green screen. I used a pure green color as my background. So I'm going to use pure green screen. I'm going to drag that onto the clip. So I'm just going to drag it right there onto the video portion and boom you notice that all the green goes away as uh, that's what a chroma keyer does if you guys know what if you've ever heard of the hollywood like blue screen or green screen that's exactly what this is okay is it just removes that particular color from the video and what you're left with is a cool little effect boom and that's it 
So, um, so that's just one effect that I think is useful. If you guys want to create like pre-rendered uh, effects that are going to show up on top of your videos and you want it to be uh, transparent, you can use that chroma key here. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you can go in and do in here. You can brighten up your videos. Let's say you're making a Minecraft video. For some reason, Minecraft videos are always really dark whenever you try and uh, render them. For some reason, I don't know. It's always darker than when you actually play the game. So you have to go in and like brighten it up. So you can come in here and like, you know, drag a brighten onto the clip, and see that brightens it up. Uh, you might have to play with it. Obviously, each game is going to have its own settings, and you're going to want to create your own presets and mess with that. This is not a tutorial on how to like edit, you know, specifics on that. But you're going to have to come in here and you can play with all of these as much as you want and figure out what effects you like uh, if you're trying to create some kind of cool effects for a video. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do in here. Um, there's lots of tutorials online for that, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm just trying to show you how to get started on editing um, just your standard stuff. So I'm going to move on past the video effects, and let's go ahead and talk about recording your mic and what, my, what equipment you're going to want to use. So let's say I have all of this footage, and I want to go ahead and do my recording later on. Um, what I'm going to do is... Um, okay, well first let me talk about the microphone that I use. So uh, if you're actually going to do a lot of recording and you, and you want to get into this like professionally, you want to get a good microphone. I like condenser microphones the most. The one I use is a, um, let me see, I can actually show you here um, what it is. My microphone is a, a Rode Podcaster. It's a condenser microphone and um, you don't have to be all fancy like me and have, have the, you know, the crazy little arm stand and stuff like that but it works out for me uh, and so uh, this one's a little more expensive it's like maybe like 200 bucks plus the the little shock mount thing you guys can look that stuff up just find a good condenser microphone if you are going to get one you do need to get the little shock thing otherwise it's going to make a lot of background noise every time you like move your desk or something like that uh, but that's a that's a good mic for me uh, otherwise I would just try and look at your headset mic make sure it's at least uh, good. My old videos, I had a headset mic, and it was okay. It was good, but um, but I definitely enjoy this microphone much better for the amount of recording that I do, and the you know for quality purposes and that sort of thing. So uh, just something to keep in mind for you guys. But back to Vegas here. When you're recording in Vegas, all you really have to do is um, well, first off. I'm going to mute the other uh, soundtracks. So if I have soundtracks that are going to interrupt or make noise while I'm recording or distract me from recording, what I want to do is go to that um, to that track. So over here, uh, there's a mute button. You can just push mute, and that'll uh, that'll mute that, so you won't hear the noise. And if I left the mute, if I left the sound from the clip on there, I would mute that track too. So I'm just going to do that. And so what I'm going to do now is create another audio track right here. So this is my insert audio track, um, and this is it right here. So this is my audio track, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click arm for record, and what that does is it asks you where you want to record to. So I don't like to record to the default spot because it's usually like your documents file and it like it'll clutter that up. So what I do is I'm just going to again organization is key. I'm going to go to browse and I actually have it all in videos and project files. League of Legends, and let's just, um, oh, sorry, not, let's do it in fra Fraps, uh, League of Legends, and Jack's audio, so, since I'm going to delete this in just a second, I'll go ahead and use that one, so, I'm going to record to my audio folder here, hit OK, so right now, you can see that it is ready to record, it's showing me my peaks, if I talk really close to it, you see it goes red, so it, like, peaks out, you don't want it to do that, obviously, so what I'll do before I start to record is I'll just do a test, so I'll just click on this right here, record button, or you can do Control R, Hey, what's up, guys? Kobe Cheese here. I'm just testing my sound. Let's see how loud it is. Let me see if I need to move my microphone closer. If I talk this loud, you can see it actually peaks out on the clip there. So obviously, I need to move it about right there. And it's not peaking out at the very top of the recording. All right. So there we go. What I did was I just like moved around the mic a little bit to see how it sounded. So let me just play that back. And you just hit space. Hey, what's up, guys? Kobe Cheese here. I'm just testing my sound. Let's see how loud it is. Let me see if I need to move my microphone closer. If I talk this loud, you can see it actually peaks out on the clip there. So obviously, I need to move it about right there. And it's not peaking. So there you go. So I know that the microphone's in a good position, and I can go ahead and stop my recording. So I'm just going to delete that file out. And then I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do my recording here. So I'm going to hit my record button. 
Hey, what's up guys? Kobe Cheese here, and I'm doing a little commentary of Jax, and there's my title. It's so fancy. Look at those video effects, and now I'm jumping on that creep. Yeah, look at it die. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter to stop recording. It's going to ask me to rename it. I don't I don't usually rename it because I don't care, but you can if you'd like. Just hit done, or if you didn't like the file, you could have hit delete. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about, uh, talk about one thing. A lot of you guys may kind of be nervous if you're just starting recording and you may like keep redoing your files and stuff like that if you make a mistake in recording. So let's say I'm sitting here and I'm talking and I may make a mistake and I need to fix that. What I'll do is I'll just keep talking. So I'm going to do record. All right, guys, I'm running around and I'm playing Nidalee. Oh, I mean Jax. So obviously I made a mistake there, but I'm just going to keep talking. Okay, so into the next cut, blah, 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 blah. All right, so what I, what I do is I'll go back, and let's say the, the entire clip is good. Like, the whole recording is great, except I said I'm playing Nidalee, which I'm not. I'm playing Jax, right? Oh, I mean Jax. So I'll find that part. So I just go find the part where I messed up. Playing Nidalee. Oh, I mean Jax. So obviously I made... Okay, so what I'll do is I'll cut it. Playing Nidalee. Oh, I mean Jax. So, so what I'll do is I'll cut that entire part out right there, move this clip like out of the way, running around, and I'm, so the part I said, I said, um, and I'm, and then I'll just record again, playing jacks, and then I'll hit enter, and then I'll just move it back, boom, and it sounds natural, running around, and I'm playing jacks, so you can tell it's kind of not natural, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of edit it up until it looks good. And I'm playing jacks. See, there it goes. It looks natural because I cut out the pause there. Round, and I'm playing jacks. So obviously I made a mistake there. But I'm just going to keep talking. Okay. Oh. So that's pretty much the easiest way to record stuff is just keep talking. Do your whole recording. If you make any mistakes, you can either go and fix that one part or, you know, just re-record however much you feel is necessary. Uh, so that's all my tips for recording. That's all you really need to know about that. And... Let's see, we've talked about using the chroma keyer, reuse of assets. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is just rendering up, rendering up your video. I showed you guys this render settings earlier, um, but uh, sometimes you may have a lot of extra space over here. So let's say all your, all your clip is right here, and maybe you even have some extra stuff because you're gonna make a second video. So what you need to do is you wanna drag at the very top here the video that you want to record. So I've got my uh, loop region set up here, and you can see right here how long the video is gonna be. It's gonna be 48 seconds long. And for those of you without a YouTube partnership, you know that you can't go over, I think, 15 minutes on your videos. So obviously this is going to be important to you uh, in case you need to know, in case you know that you're going to have to split your clips up or something like that. Okay. So um, so what I'm going to do is just select that part there and I can go to file, render as, and select my preset that I created from earlier. Make sure I set the folder that I want to, I want to, you know, render it to and my recording and just hit save and it'll start rendering. Um, if you have a slower computer, even if you have a fast computer, it's going to take a long time to render. So just let it go. Make sure sometimes you may render overnight if you have other things to do. Um, but, uh, but that's one thing to do. So another thing is let's say you have a couple of commentaries that you did and you recorded them live via Fraps. Let's say you just did everything live. You were watching Law Recorder and you recorded the game. You're not even going to record it here. Um, in Fraps. You're just going to drag all the files to Vegas and you're going to render them up to upload to YouTube later. Um, and you have like three games. It sucks to have to go in there and do it one at a time. So let me show you a trick. I didn't actually figure this out until like eight months after I, I was doing YouTube stuff and it was like a godsend, okay? So I'm just going to select this here and just as an example, I'm just going to copy it. Um, okay, so so there is game two. So so what you do is you want to select game one here. All right, so let's put it in. This is game one. I'm going to hit the button R, which stands for region. And I'll just name it you know, game one or whatever. And then I'm going to create another region for game two. Okay, so I'm going to do game two. So bam, so I got two regions, one for game one, one for game two. What you do in order to render both of them at the same time is, and by the way, before you do a uh, project like this, make sure you save the project somewhere because what it's going to do is it's going to render them to the same place that the uh, file is saved and you don't have any control over that so so make sure you save that otherwise you're going to be like where did my files render to all right so go to tools and go down to scripting and then you want to do batch render okay and what it does is it brings up this option here and uh it lets you know the base file name so you can actually, uh, basically what it names the file as is it'll name it as like whatever file tab that you, you render it as. So you can name it as like, uh, you know, commentaries or whatever. 
commentaries. And if you need to change the file that it renders it to, or the location it renders to it, you can do it here. But if you forgot to do that, it would just render it to wherever it's saved, which that's what this is. Um, and then you want to, you got render project, selection, or regions. Always do regions, okay? So that'll do all the regions that you've created. And then you need to go down to Windows Media Video, and then click on the preset that you have. And so this is where having a preset is important because you can't, you know, go individually mess with the settings here. So you need to have that preset ready to go. Um, you know, I've got console settings because sometimes I render uh, me playing on console if you've ever watched my Zelda series. So there's the render regions. I click on YouTube 1080p, then I'll click OK, and it'll just batch render both of those. And so there you go. That's your Vegas like basic editing tutorial, how to record it and get started. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And um, I may do like like a follow up video later for anyone who may have questions on stuff that I didn't cover, possibly like a shoutcasting tutorial or I don't know something like that. Uh, but I did want to get this out. Is you know my updated uh, video. It's been a while since I, I created a, a tutorial on how to do this. Maybe I'll do one on like uh, something else. But anyways, if this was helpful to you guys and you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button. Uh, share it with your friends who are looking to get into recording. And um, yeah, that's it. Subscribe to my channel for more League of Legends videos. And I'll see you guys around for the next one. Peace out.